We're now going to look at taking our data from Google Forms, working with it in Google Sheets, and then how we can use that to uh, to mark. Right, so this may uh, some of this may go quick. Just remember that you can always pause this video, go back, have a look at it, and also the sheet itself that I'm working from is available in the Google Drive folder. All right, so if I if I'm in forms, I can see my responses and it'll summarize them there, or, but that's not always that easy to work with or convenient. So Google Forms will flip its data into Google Sheets for you, uh, which makes it much more useful. So first of all, I typically go and I'll uh, use the wrap text function, and just so I can read all the headers. What I'm going to want to do is create two more copies of all of these columns. I'm going to have the student response copy as the first set of columns and then I'm going to work with the data in the second set of columns and then marks will be awarded in the third set of columns. Um, for the later student return of work I need to actually be able to differentiate between the columns so I typically go through and I just put a 1 at the end of the first set of columns uh, all the headers. I put a 2 at the end of all the second set and I put a 3 at the end of the text for all the third set of columns. This is uh, later we're going to use an add-on called Autocrat and I need to be able to differentiate between each of the, uh, the columns. So it takes a little bit of time to set up but that's why it doesn't really matter what you call them, that's why I usually just throw a number in and I use 1, 2, and 3 just to keep myself straight on uh, whether I'm working with student data, my data, or marking data. Alright, so you can see in there I've gone and I've entered my 1s, my 2s, my 3s. Uh, this will be helpful for later on. Alrighty, I'm even actually going to fill in some... Uh, I'm just going to call the cells blank. I just don't want any confusion uh, in the program that I'm going to use later on. So, alright, now I have all this wide range of headers. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving the data around. So for example, the first thing I'm going to do uh, on what's going to be my set of calculations, I'm going to bring the student's name over, their session number, and then I'm also going to bring over their uh, the values that they measured. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the correct answer to, uh, to their questions. This was about circumference. Uh, and but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that answer by using the formula, but I'm, notice how I'm using their value. Then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to make a correct answer for the area question, but again, I'm basing it off of the student's value. So this is how I can actually, every student in a class can have different starting values, but I'm creating a formula that will work from their starting value, and then it, I'll run the calculation based on what they should have got. So I can also correct for my significant figures with the uh, the decimal buttons up there. Uh, you'll see why that's relevant later on. Okay, so again, I'm going to run this, a similar calculation for the seconds to years time conversion. Again, I'm going to correct for the significant figures. Notice I'm still just working in the second set of columns that I've created. I've not moved on to the marking set yet. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, go get the student name. I've also inserted an additional column. I've called it score, and I've put it a three beside it just because uh, I'm working with the marking section now. Um, I'm going to sum all of the columns to the right of this one. Or I guess to the right, sorry, of the session number. Uh, basically, I'm going to add up all the marks. So if I'm going to... Uh, award a grade, let's say, of one point, just because the student supplied an answer, they measured something. I'm going to use the if uh, if command, which will say uh, if E2 is equal to M2, award a grade of one. Now, where this becomes quite useful is that, let's say I want to uh, mark a student's work based on the calculation that they did. Sheets only understands an exact match, but so if the student's off on significant figures, uh, it won't match. So what I have set up here for you, and again, pay attention to the text on the screen a little separately from uh, what I'm saying, uh, I basically said that as long as their answer is within 10% of what I've deemed the correct answer, a mark of one will be awarded. 
if their answer is outside of this 10% range, a mark of zero will be awarded. That's this combination if and command that you can see on the screen there. Uh, by all means, pause this, go back and get it. You can probably see from the video I had to copy and paste my own command uh, just so I got the syntax right. All right, so I'm going to copy that command into the three relevant cells where I had to calculate uh, circumference and then area and then where I had to calculate years. Okay, because I don't want students for the purposes of this activity, I don't want this grading the students on whether they got their significant figures correct or not. That's definitely something that needs to be addressed, but maybe for the purposes of this activity, a significant figures isn't relevant for uh, what I'm trying to show the students. So I'm tried to show you that uh, correction for significant figures, the decimal button, earlier because I am going to report out to the students on what the correct significant figures were, so that maybe in the future uh, I will set it to that they have to have an exact match for what, I, uh, for what I say is the correct answer based on their data. Okay, so we're going to move on from this, and we're going to you're going to need to switch to Google Docs. Again, I would create a new doc in your uh, in your drive folder that we created earlier.